This is the Supercoach NRL official podcast. Round preview with Tom Sangster and Rob Sutherland. Hello, super coaches, and welcome to our preview podcast for round eight. Massive show. We've got the burning issues for the three Anzac Day games, captaincy options, best bets, questions. Send through your questions, guys, and we will get to them either on Facebook or YouTube. And the other big breaking news today is that Rob Sutherland is back on the show. Yes. Hi, Thomas. Thanks for having me and my matching eye infections. It's great. And thank you for giving me yesterday off to get some of the pus trained out. How was your holiday, by the way, in it was, Vietnam? It was good. It was yep. good. Um, food, amazing. People, amazing. Um, only one bloke uh, pigeonholed me in a pool and, and abused me about Supercoach. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Pretty good result, pretty good. really. Yeah. Uh, so my... Um, my drama this week is that so I'm taking my daughter who's four to the Anzac Day game Roosters v Dragons so um, she hates rugby league and so <laughs> I've booked this in and I've told her that I'm taking her to the football and trying to make a big deal out of it and she goes football's so boring I don't want to go <laughs> um Unfortunately, they're not sitting near each other, but she could go and sit with my kids who are going to the game as well without me because I find it too emotional. So instead, my wife and mother-in-law, who's from South Australia, has never watched a rugby league game in her life is going so they could all sit together they could all sit and, together and, like, and be just, bored together yeah. <laughs> sensational i even go i thought that like i could get her dressed up because she loves getting dressed up so i bought out this old um jersey that i had when i was a kid and it's got ricky walford's signature and old goldthorpe all these chook heron it's like it's a it's a real collector's item and a real sentimental item for me and i sort of presented it to her look you can wear this and she goes that looks old i'm not wearing that <laughs> and, and it's <laughs> And it's the dragons. So it's the dragons. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe yeah. we could get. Maybe that's We're it. Have to get, get her, her interested one. somewhere. Then she be. Yeah, then she be stylish. No, let's not do that. All right. Uh, send through your question, guys. We'll get to them in a sec. I'm just loading them up now. Uh, in terms of the code subscription, right now, fifty nine dollars up front for twelve months. You get Supercoach Plus plus all the articles, and then after that, seven ninety nine. So a really good deal there on code subscriptions. Six comments have lobbed. Let's guess. And I will. None of them are going to be. They'll be first. <laughs> They'll be me. Thanks to Yeah, boys. Sarge. Best captain's choice <laughs> this week. And he's Terrell Mayer. So okay, let's start with best captain's choice. What are you thinking? Straight into it. Um, I originally was going Tommy Four Pines, um, mm. but I'm now sort of switching over to Nico Hines with the Trindle news. Uh, mm. I assume Hines is going to be swinging both ways um, on the football field, um, and he's playing the Raiders who are a little <laughs> under strength. So yeah, Nico. Tommy Turbo for me every week. I've done it every week this year, and he scored the fourth most points of any player. So it's worked out okay for me. Yeah. Always captain Tommy Turbo at Four Pines particularly against the Eels, who are coming off... I mean, they're not going well this year and are coming off an absolute spanking. So Maybe hopefully you, you this is the week. switch me back the other way, Thomas. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to flip-flop. Uh, Who, who's your vice-captain? I'm going um, Sean Johnson. I'm thinking... Uh, oh, I haven't even picked my vice-captain yet, actually. Fafita? <laughs> Fafita, probably, yeah. I've got Fafita locked in for now. Yeah. yeah. Um, question saying, up, up, Rob Nuller, Sutherland. <laughs> that comes up a lot. I don't know who... Really? Where does that come from? <laughs> I know. I'll get my yeah. scarf and wave it around like ScoMo. <laughs> and the second part of that question was, is Terrell May a sell? What's I, going on with his minutes? Like, what is Robbo doing? 30 minutes on the weekend, then sometimes he gets 50 or 60 minutes. He looks like the new pain house one week, and yeah. then the minutes just drop the next. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard. To, it's, it's really hard to get a hold on. I, I mean, I, I think the Roosters are a much better team when Terrell May's on the field. So... You know, personally, I'd like to see, you know, Terrell May play the big minutes and Jared play the impact, you know, not not vice versa. And Lindsay Collins get as many minutes as you can out of that lunatic. So um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I can only think it's in some ways an embarrassment of Rich's issue. I'm kind of hoping this week when it's close to the best team, um, Connor Watson back on the bench as opposed to in the halves, Sam Walker there. I, I'm hoping they revert to Terrell May playing 45-50. Yeah, I'm hoping as well. I'm not selling Terrell May yet, no. but if this continues, he could easily become, let's say, Adam Fenua Blake or Fenua something Blake's like that. Fenua Blake's a good price right now. Yeah. 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 Uh, On to the burning issues for Anzac Day. Warriors v Titans is the first clash. 
The big question is whether Sean Johnson's going to play. We will be chasing that for late mail, but the word on him is that he is struggling with an Achilles injury um, and needs to get rested at some stage. So it could be this weekend against the Titans. It's not. It's a pretty easy matchup. It's at home, and they give him this game off, and he gets 17 days off until the next game. Nah, Andrew Webster. Andrew Webster in his quotes was reasonably solid as a Sean Johnson owner, like passing through them that that he was going to play right because yeah, you know, it's a big game. It's Anzac Day. It's a bounce back off a game where they got pantsed. They need to make a statement in this game. If he plays this one at home and then gets rested for the next one, which is against the Knights, I think he gets, again, he'll get 16, 17 days off. He avoids the trip over to Australia and then they've got a double trip because they've got the Roosters away and then they've got the Panthers for Magic Round. So I would imagine they, he plays this one, rests, gets a full almost you know, two and a half weeks and then he's got a double trip to Australia. Well, let's hope so if you're a Sean Johnson owner. I am, and that's um, why I really, yeah, really, really looked I'm, into I'm that one. I'm speaking it into you, action. You, you know? may as well write late mail for us today. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be asking for some pars as soon as we get off. Adam Fenor Blake, he's going to be in my team at some stage. I just don't know if I want to spend money at prop yet, but certainly he will be in most people's final 17 going home. Obviously, uh, Origin is coming up and he's got he has the buy on round 13, so that's not ideal, mm. but it should be pretty clear from there. Yeah, look, at the moment I've got Terrell May and Max King as my premium front rowers, and I'd like to turn those into Payne Haas and Fenua Blake. Fenua Blake's price is pretty right, um, and round 14 looks almost as hard as round 13 at this stage, so he'll help you there. I'm pretty tempted to make the move, but I want to give Fenua Blake another week, and I think... No, sorry, May another week, yeah. The, the guy who I think is an amazing pod in this clash is David Fafita. I don't know how he's only at 3% ownership. Hasn't busted out yet, but he's still averaging mid-70s, playing from the bench. It's, he's going to be huge this year. So if you, I know there's a lot of issues with Ponga being injured and a lot of people are dealing with things like that. But if you can, and even to use a boost to get David Fafita, I think it's a, not a bad option. Boosts? Mm. No. Nah. You yeah, that have, was, that was last week's that. problem. Boosts are gone. I don't have to worry about that. Are you serious? Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, my what? team, my, I had like just, just it, you know, if I had any luck, it was bad luck at the start of the, the season. You know, picks that should have gone that should have gone well didn't go well, and injuries, and and so I just used them, and and now my team actually looks bearable. So, Oof, it's going to be tough over the buy period. That's for sure. Nah, let's worry about that later. For, what are we for talking Fita, about? For that Fita. Fita. Fita yeah. is a great get. I, I just think it's an issue with yeah, everyone's been been dealing with bigger problems than upgrading to an eight hundred thousand dollar second row. But yeah, yeah. you got him, and, and well done. He's going great. Dragons be the Roosters. Uh, Angus Crichton. I'm pretty happy with him. Got the fifty odd points, but it was all in pure base. So if that's his um, if that's his base, then going forward we should be looking at a 60, 65 average. Hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. I, I think his base, you know, could could even be more. That the game flow sort of get, went against him, racking up more of it. Um, and he's a second row with heaps of attacks. So, you know, I think those who got him around five hundred k are very happy. On to the Storm v the Rabbitohs. Harry Grant is. Uh, what's going on with Harry Grant? Because most people had him earmarked, and I certainly did as the best hooker in Supercoach. Then he's gone on. He's averaged. He's got the seventh best average in Supercoach. He's only had hooker, one good game at hooker. Yeah. So like it's seventh best. There's all these guys like Reese Robson and Blake Braley, or like a whole bunch of guys are ahead. So is Harry Grant worth hanging on to? Yes. Look, the minutes are there, right? It's not like he's only playing 55 minutes and and Wishart or Garlic or someone's poaching his minutes. He's playing the minutes. The base is okay. That there's not much in the way of running, but. I, I feel that the Storm been doing enough to win, but they're, they're, you know, they're, their spine, Munster, Hughes, Pappenhausen, Grant, hasn't really clicked yet. But to me, that's as much Munster's looking a little out of, out of form and out of shape. And I think they'll pull themselves together. They're too good a team not to. And as long as Harry Grant's playing 80, the 90-plus the scores are going to come. 
Yeah, and up against the Rabbitohs, which is about the best this matchup the you can get. So yeah. ho hopefully this is it. Yeah. And a decent VC option as well in that clash. And Joe Chan is uh, he's on the bench again, so hopefully he can make that 40k that he is predicted to make. The, now it's the Storm I want to... Uh, like, the guy I most tempted to get... I mean, Pappenhausen, I think, is a good pick. But yeah. it's... Um, Sean Bloor has been really, yeah. really good since he started mm. playing 80. Like, I picked up Elias Katoa, and I'm happy with that. But... I don't want to have both of them, but I think Sean Bloor at his price is a really good buy. The issue I had with Bloor is that Angus Crichton was available that same week, so That's a lot fair, of people yeah. went Crichton instead, which I think is still a solid move. But Bloor is going to be one of those guys that really got away for a lot of super coaches. I think so, yeah. On to our best bets of the week, brought to you by Tab's NRL Same Game Multi. Build smarter same game multis using stats and insights. Download the Tab app today. Now, I said I'm going to be at this Anzac Day clash. I think it's going to be a low scoring affair. So I've gone total points under 43.5 into the Dragons plus nine and a half. So I essentially think the Dragons will lose, but not by that much in a tight clash. I can get that for, for, for three bucks. So it's a pretty good price on that. And the only place to place that bet is on the Tab app. What have you got for us? I think three bucks is a waste of my time. Tom. So I'm not <laughs> yeah. going to line up for three bucks. So forget this building a smarter multi. I've just built a stupid multi. I've got, it's, it's two legs. It's Brian Kelly, first try scorer. He's only scored one try so far this year. He usually scores more. Why not score one against the Warriors? And then Roger Tuiavasa, any time to score a try, 51 to 1, Thomas. 51 bucks. Yeah. That is huge. And, of course, the only place to place that bet is on the Tab don't, app. Don't place that bet. Place a better bet. What is gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on screen or visit the website gamblinghelponline.org.au. Cheapy Bible time. Lots of guys coming up. I don't think there's a real good standout cheapy for this week, but certainly there's some uh, guys. There are some guys on the horizon. Let's chat about Simi Sasagi first up. Is he a trap? I think he could be. I've gotten mm. trouble for using the word trap this week. I used it about Reese Walsh and then did a volte face and yeah, consider oh, him yeah, probably a good buy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, back to Sasagi. Yeah, the issue is that Elliot Whitehead is due back next week. So uh, Simi Sasagi is that beautiful Swiss Army knife guy that can fill in the centres, can fill in the halves, can fill in second row. You assume when Whitehead, Whitehead comes back, Sasagi goes to the bench. Um, he scored okay from the bench. He scored 40-odd points. But, like, 12 of that was in base and there was two try assists, I think. So, yeah, it's risky. Yeah, I think it's risky too. And for that reason, if you are looking for a cheapie this week, I actually think Chevy Stewart is the man. I know he copped a real sort of welcome to first grade um, initiation against the Broncos, and it was tough. But he showed real ticket to bounce back from that. The base is pretty good. Like, he's averaging 15.5 runs per game. And the fact that Ricky Stewart has backed him in again this week says that the job security is pretty good, at least while Jordan Rapana is out. So... I think he is the top cheapie of the week. Is he a good cheapie? No, we've seen much better cheapies this year, but I still think he is the top one to get on if you need to free up cash this week. I don't like it. I don't like it because I think if he has one more bad game and um, Albert Hoppawati comes back, mm. you know, they, they've got that back line that can, that can shuffle around. You know, Seb Chris can move to here and someone else can move to there and Hoppawati can come in. So uh, I think it's a bit risky for me. David Armstrong. So he is going to debut in Kalen Ponga's fullback spot at the Knights. So we definitely have to keep an eye on him. Dual position, bottom dollar. So if this comes through, he will be... I mean, even if he averages 30 over the next two games, he will be by far the most popular purchase in two weeks. Yeah, he's been solid. Not killing it in New South Wales Cup. I got to watch a bit of him. Um, but yeah, it, he was very good in the trial. I remember that. Um, so yeah, one to watch, not to get. Kyo Weeks, another guy to watch. He comes into the halves for Fogarty at the Raiders. And Ethan Sanders is one who stands out for me a little bit because Mitchell Moses is out for a while. They've rotated through a few halves combinations there. The issue is, of course, Dejan Arcee, and he's out with concussion this week. But if Sanders can have a blinder and keep Arcee out of the side, another guy to keep an eye on. I hope he has a blinder on the right-hand side and Dylan Brown moves back to the left-hand side and, yeah. you know, we, we get what we want out of Brown. He's been okay the last two weeks. I think he'll be better on the left. Dean Broccoli says, How is Rob looking so tired after the world's longest holiday? 
<laughs> it was a, a two-week holiday. And I do think there's a fair chance it's my eye infections is perhaps making me look yeah. a little more tired than I am. But yeah. Um, what, have, what else do we have here? Nothing. Lots nice. of chatter. Yeah, not not a lot of nice stuff. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, we'll get to some questions in a sec. Oh, Holmes as a VC this week. I think it's, it's at home. I'm seeing people so, actually sit homes this week, which I think is a little aggressive. It's against the Panthers, but it's, they're a different team at home in Townsville. And yeah, they're going to want to be. They were pretty, and, pretty poor last week. But uh, in terms of this game as well, the Cowboys have conceded the second most points of any team. So get on Panthers this week. I think Cleary could be a sneaky C or VC option. Taylor May, play him for sure. Mm. Um, and we'll get to Dylan Edwards later, but... I probably wouldn't be going for Dylan Edwards given the issues with his hamstring. But, we'll but to answer later. that, I wouldn't be VCing Holmes, or nor would I be sitting him. I think that's perhaps a bit aggressive. So no late mail for today because the teams have literally just been announced, so we, we have nothing to talk about. It's a bit of a weird week with the Anzac Day, but we will, um, we will have that on the site this afternoon, so have a look out for that on the Code website, Daily Telegraph, Courier Mail, wherever you get your Supercoach news. We're replacing the late mail segment with Ponga replacements, which was a request from you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, hit us. Hit well, us. like, I need to replace Ponga. And for mine, the two major options were Reese Walsh, who is very good value at 600k, and um, Nickel Cookstar uh, from the Warriors. Now, they're, they're like the, they're diametrically different players, right? Reese Walsh. Um, only only makes 11 runs in a game, but what he does with them can be spectacular. Um, uh, Nickel Klukstar very rarely scores tries, but he just works. He's got a base in 50. That's all coming in runs. I was all about the base. I, as you know, Thomas, I've admitted before, I tend to play super coach too safe, right? And and that's the the way I am. Um, and Nickel Klukstar has been making. Sorry? Sorry? No, don't worry. No, Nickel Cook starts being made, except when I say stupid best bets. <laughs> yeah, he tells me about It's not my money. 51 bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Making 26 runs a game. Now, my fear now, having sort of thought about it, is that that's unsustainable. So I went and had a look at stats in the past. Last year, he averaged 18 runs a game, over 20 games. That's very good. Very good. How good? Well, Dylan Edwards was the leading runner of the game last year, and he averaged 17. Played more games, therefore made more runs. But the best ever, all time, RTS in 2015, 21 runs a game. Paul, two hit-ups a set gallon in 2017, only made 18 runs a game. I just can't see how Nickel Klukstar can make 26 runs a game consistently. No one else has ever done it, right? Not, like, it's Bradman-esque gap to the next best sort of thing. Um, and for that reason, for all of those stats and that useless words, I'm now back to Reese Walsh. <laughs> Some good analysis there, though, Rob. And I'm on Reese Walsh as well. I just can't turn him down at 200k less than his starting price. I think that the really good pod option is Tedesco, though, at 5%. He was a super coach superstar a couple of weeks ago, then got that concussion. His price has dropped, so you can get him pretty juicy. Of course, the issue is that he's got that big break even, so his price probably drops a little bit more, whereas Reese Walsh, Walsh's price probably goes up from here. If I was going to go a two week pod, it's Ryan Pappenhausen. I think he's got a great two week draw. I think he's got yeah, um, yes. Rabbits this week, and I think maybe the Titans the week after, or, or Knights. It's, it's a pretty good one. Um, so I think he's a great get. Guilty pleasure time. So this is the player you shouldn't pick, but you can't help yourself. For me, I'm just, I don't know why. I'm leaning so much towards Chevy Stewart. I think it's the redemption story. I want to, I love the way he responded to um, that initiation against the Broncos, and I really want him to do well. So, I, yeah, I'm letting my heart get in front of my head on this one, but for some reason I keep coming back to Chevy Stewart, and it makes no sense. Right, well, mine, uh, I've got two. Yep. Uh, Liam Henry, because I am yep. guilty of stupidity and have to pick him because uh, my other front rowers are Bulldogs players who are on yes. the bike. <laughs> um, and the other one is Kale Iroh. Uh, I'm guilty of thinking, does anyone else think he looks like Val Holmes? Like if you he took eight, he's like yeah. identical. You take yeah. a few years off him. Um, but geez, he was impressive last week. I love the way yeah. he ripped in, his running style. I'm not feeling bad about picking him, but I wanted to throw that out. Yeah, mid-50s in base and somehow missed all the attacking stats in that game. So I think we're looking at a guy who you can put in your 17 pretty safely each week. Unfortunately, I've got him and Mulatalo, and I'm worried about the left edge with Trindle out. But, you know, 
Atkinson's not a bad player, so we'll see how it goes. No go zone. So this is a player, a popular player this week that you think makes no sense. For me, it's Dylan Edwards. And look, he has the best average of any fullback in Supercoach this year, except for CNK, but he's only played three games, so I discount him. Um, he's 10 points better than Tommy Turbo, so he's going really, really well. But he does have that hamstring tightness. And whenever I hear the term hamstring tightness, I just go running. I can't go there because these things can linger. Hamstring tightness can easily be, can, can turn into, he's in doubt this week to three weeks out. Well, he also had the goal kicking while Cleary's out. He's now lost that. Yeah. He, he's strongly in origin contention. So, you know, you, you'd have to weigh that up as well. So that makes sense. Um, my no-go zone is Jason Saab. I think he's... Yeah. irrationally popular as a buy this week yeah. off off the back of a big score last week. He's 550k. Um, he, he is the, the quintessential winger who can go 80, 80, 30, 30, 20, right? So you, you can lose any money you're about to make. I much prefer um, Katoa, Sione Katoa of the Sharks, right edge. He's back this week after missing last week. The right edge of the Sharks will be Action City, I think. Um, and I'll shout out to Will Penasini of the Eels, who is really clicking at the moment. He's been enjoying having Dylan Brown on his side. On to captaincy choices this week. Uh, I'm, this segment is getting boring because, I, as I've said, I'm going turbo every week as captain and trying not to think about it too much. But I think Nico Hines is very good against the depleted Raiders at 17.6%. Uh, mm. Then you've got uh, Nathan Cleary as well against the Cowboys who are just leaking lots and lots of points. Yeah. He's at 8.3%. I think they're all good picks, honestly. Mm. I, I genuinely am struggling between Turbo and Hines. It'll probably come down to which game I'm going to watch. Um, I think I've got to be on the road for one of them. So, yeah, <laughs> that'll decide. Great decision-making process there. Yeah. Questions to the end of the show. Damo is asking, would you be going Robson to Grant or Strange to Cleary? Look... Robson to Grant is not... I mean, we just spoke about how Harry Grant's been a little bit disappointing this year. Cleary's... They've both got really good matchups this week. That's the issue. But I'd probably take Cleary ahead of Grant. Uh, yeah, or, or if I was going Robson out, I'd be going to Marshall King. Um, in very nice form. Um, helps you with the first buy. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd Marshall King's the hooker to get, I think. What do you think... This is from Timothy Scott. What do you think of Reed and Marnie after the buy? Um, it was very some very funny moments in that game over the weekend. His try assists, though, I mean, realistically, how often is he just going to pass from dummy half and a big crash play comes from Sam Hughes or whoever it happens to be and they Mate, score? As, as like, a Harry Grant, easy I used to never assists. complain when he'd give yeah. it to Naz, who would be in a torpedo yeah. action, you know, from three metres out. That's a hooker's try assist. That's fine. Uh, also, he's asking if Karaz is a good pod after the bye. Always a good, like he's always on the fringe of being a great super coach player because he's got all that base. And the offloads. Um, and yeah. the offloads. And I liked what I saw from the Bulldogs in that they have so much speed in their side now with Addo Carr and um, Connor Tracy is pretty nippy at the back. And then Bronson Cherry as well. They've got a quick back line with lots of speed. I know they're not noted for putting on points, but. There are some good signs there. It's as good as I've seen Burton play in the halves. Um, and I think you're right with Connor Tracy. I think Connor Tracy is that link man. Um, Burton is a great kicker, maybe not the best passer in the halves. And I think Connor Tracy, as a link, helps him get the ball out to the wingers better. So that's what I've liked. And that's why I think Karaz and, and the centres and the wingers are looking better at the dogs. So, yeah, I could get around. Question from Ben Coates. Would you prioritise Adam Fanua Blake or David Fafita? It's a pretty big price difference, isn't there? Um, yeah. Fanua for Blake is a very good price this week, so I'd maybe lean that way. But as I've said earlier in the show, David Fafita is the, the best pot in Supercoach right now. If there's a hill, and there's many, that I'm prepared to die on, it's that Fanua Blake can't keep scoring tries. Yeah. So I'd go David Fafita and watch Fanua Blake keep scoring tries. Uh, lots of questions about Adam Fanua Blake, actually. Any news on Flegler's return? Again, we will um, we'll be, have late mail this afternoon on the code website, Daily Telegraph, Career Mail, wherever you get your late mail. That's a way of saying be no, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> we don't know yet. <laughs> we, we are chasing it. Yet. Big thanks to Rob. Good to have you back on the show. Uh, we'll catch you next week for the Teams podcast on Tuesday, 3.55pm. We'll see you then.